Hi friends. Coming in at you with a vlog style. Checking for more concealer battle comparisons. Oh, you like what I have on my eyes? Round two with Linda's Spectral Palette. I am looking to film with this palette tomorrow. Be on the lookout for several looks. Today, I decided to try the blue shimmer on the inner lid. Yes, I had the same flannel I had on yesterday, but don't smell bad, I'm wearing it again, okay? I also put more blush. I actually use the pink shade in the palette. I applied it higher on the cheekbones so we can get like that spring look going on. You like it? Oh, and I did a wing liner today too. But that's not why you clicked on this video. <laughs> today, we are looking at the Pat McGrath and Hourglass Concealers face to face. I actually switched today. Yesterday, I applied my pack concealer on this side. So this side, we have the Hourglass and this side we have the pat because I observed from using the Dior yesterday. If you wanna click on that check-in video, I will link it up above and down below. This part of my face wore off. In terms of the time frame we have today, my makeup was completed around 6.30 a.m. You heard that correctly. We're now looking at 3 p.m. We're looking around eight hours, fam, and wanted to let you know also that I did a live session this morning, but I, it wasn't sweaty. We did a little bit of core for half an hour, and then I had some breakfast. I walked around some. I trained. I lifted for an hour, and I taught after, and I came home none of which made my face sweaty at any point during the day. We were looking at a balmy 50 something degrees. I know it felt like springtime here in NYC. I was never really super hot. I never needed a dab. So those were the environmental conditions that I dealt with today. So this is what we're looking at. Again, I have the hourglass on this side, which I'm actually quite uh, impressed with. I applied Dune, dotted it around my face, stippled that in but I did apply topaz for my under eye circles. So that's what we're looking at here. Let me uh, get you to focus, Mr. Camera. Apply topaz first, applied dune after, and I'm talking about dot, 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 dot. There, there's no swipes here, okay? And two dots of sienna on the under, most inner part of my under eye and outer part. So I applied three layers of concealer for the hourglass side. Yeah, so this is what we're looking at. I really love how the rest of my face looks. Actually, I like the Hourglass more all over my face than the Dior because I think the staying power is better. I also set with the translucent veil under my eyes as well as all over my face. And I'm talking about a light application of powder. I just used my Wayne Goss airbrush brush, pat it down lightly, and this is what we're looking at. How do we, what are we thinking, friends? I wanna get you in real close. Hello there. This is what we're looking at on the innermost part of my eye. This is the texture. This is how it looks like from far in terms of the hourglass side. Taking a look again up close. And then let's go over to Pat's side. Now I'm much happier with the coverage here. I felt that the Dior wore off I think more so. You can still see my hyperpigmentation showing through, but I don't think it was as much as when I wore the Dior. And you can see that my blush is also, I feel still intact. Oh, I also forgot to mention, forgive me, forgive me. I applied flax as like a very soft contour on this side. And today, in addition to the LM14 that I have under my eyes, as well as my M16, if I can find her. I don't know where M16 is. She's probably, I think she's over there and I can't reach her, I'm so sorry. I have M16 all over my face like I applied yesterday, but I applied two dots of MD22 for my contour. And that's how the contour is looking like on this side. And this is how flax looks like on this side. It's much softer. This definitely has a little more punch, a little more shadow for sure. And this is Pat's side. I think I would say 
Okay, so I have a confession to make. I picked up LM13. Hear me out, fam. Hear me out. I was saying I feel this looks just a little yellow under me. The LM14 looks a little yellow. And I'm because I'm like right up in the camera lens right now in front of natural light. So it's not like I'm going to be in someone's face like this, nor am I worried that the yellow will pick up if I were to take a photograph. But I don't know if you can see the color difference. I'm gonna cut down the exposure. Maybe you can see that better. I do feel that despite the coloration, I do feel the pat stayed intact more so than the hourglass. I feel you can see more of a dip here versus on this side, but that just could be my skin. And again, I'm very happy with how the concealer looks all over my face. Now, what I will say is that I feel the hourglass blends out easier all over my face. The pat concealer, although creamy, has a little bit of stickiness to it. It's like sticky, it's, ve it's very strange. So that's why I feel if I were to just wear the concealer exclusively as my foundation, I would rather sweep very in small amounts because a little goes a long way with the pat foundation. I will sweep instead of dot because I felt like I really needed to work those dots in on my face to ensure that it all spread evenly and looked like it melted into my skin. Whereas I felt the hourglass was a little easier to blend out on a larger surface area of my face than I did the pat. But I also feel like you don't need a lot of the pat. And just to be fair, I actually applied, since I applied three different concealers on this side, I applied two layers of the pat on this eye. So the first layer I did dot, 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 dot blended that out and just put two dots extra here on the innermost part of my eye where I feel the under eye darkness is most prominent just so I'm a little even with the layers and this is what we're looking like. What do we think? How do we feel the hourglass compares to Pat's concealer in terms of look, in terms of uh, texture, in terms of coloration? I would say the coloration is very similar th with the Hourglass. I would say M16 is very similar to Dune, but I do think the LM14 is a little yellow versus the Sienna, because the Sienna is considered a corrector in the Hourglass Airbrush Vanish Concealer line, so do keep that in mind. I love how the Hourglass looks all over my face. I'm looking at myself in the mirror. I'm very pleased with the longevity, with the texture. I'm equally pleased with this side. I'm t I'm telling you, man, my smile lines, this, so this is the pat side. <laughs> Hello there. This is the pat side. You can see that it kind of settled into my line there. So there is a crack for sure. Nothing on my nose, because we know the story with that, with my, you know, blowing my nose throughout the day. There is no concealer that will stay on there. Let's take a look at this forehead. What do we think about the forehead? I'm looking at myself in the mirror at the same time. Inception! I'm very happy with both concealers. I will say, though, between all the ones that I've tried, that the Hourglass is most closely related to pats in terms of the consistency. That is like a tight, creamy texture that needs a little bit of blending. And they both have like what they call a radiant, radiant matte finish. I think what they mean by that description is that it dries down matte without looking dry. However, despite their efforts in ensuring the formula does just that, I feel people with drier skin under the eyes just don't favor that type of finish despite how great it is. And keep in mind when you see Pat's Instagram, she is putting this concealer on models' skin that is smooth already, okay? I yet have to see uh, someone who applies this concealer on her Instagram that's older than 30. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, however, but I feel this concealer, much like her foundation, was formulated for already looking okay skin, and it just created that 
veil of coverage that was just enough to enhance the skin and not cover it up completely. I do feel that Pat's concealer offers up a lot more coverage than her foundation, but again, most ideal on skin that's already not super dry and textured, especially under the eyes, which is why I feel people prefer the Dior over the Pat for that reason. And it's true, the Dior is a lot more fluid, a lot more creamy. I feel a lot more under eye friendly. If you do insist on using Pat, you can't use a lot. I feel you can get away with using a lot more the, of the Dior than you can with Pat. Pat is all about the dot, dot, dot. Dior is about the shoopy, shoopy, shroop. You know what I'm saying? I feel the same thing with the Hourglass. Hourglass is all about the dotting, less about the shrooping. A little goes a long way with the Hourglass as well. So I'm quite happy with both sides, I have to say. In terms of the under eyes, however, I feel that the Pat is smoother than the Hourglass. Here's the Hourglass again. If you want to take a look, I will be still. And here is the Pat side. And here is just me again. Hello there. Let's get a shot of this post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So talking, Alicia. And here is the other side, looking at the hourglass. Not as much hyperpigmentation on this side, but it's it's still present. You know what I'm saying? And that is it, my friends. Hourglass Pat check-in done. Tomorrow is Shiseido versus Pat. So stay tuned for that. And until then, friends, that is. A wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another concealer check-in. Review, tutorial, get ready with me, or Friday night chick chat. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.